Griffin the Griffin by Blackwing Chapter 37 Farewell I was once again in private with Twilight. She started again. Can I ask you some questions? Are they about magic? No. Go ahead. What did Princess Luna mean when she said I had taken her place as best pony? I started to giggle. <laughs> it's, a, it's an alien thing. You see... Uh, well, okay. You promise not to tell anyone? Seriously, if anyone else knows about this, it could spell ruin. Um... All right? She replied nervously. You're a celebrity in my world. All six of you, and the princesses. What? Yes, I knew about you long before I came here. Lots of us do, although we didn't know it was real. We thought it was fiction. Anyway, fans have their favorite characters, and a lot of them argue and debate the merits of each. The phrase, X is best pony, is basically used as a way to describe who your favorite is. I happen to like Luna. She's no stranger to misery, and despite that, she works for a better tomorrow. Er, well, she was my favorite. Until I learned she had a pet spider. And that's a problem because... Spiders are evil. You're afraid of spiders? They're evil little demons straight from the pits of Tartarus. There was one that was at least 60 feet long, had fangs the size of my sword, and it was her pet from a thousand years ago, although it was much smaller back then. Anyway, you can't tell the others, or they'll be looking over their shoulders all the time. Fluttershy would feel like she was always being washed, and Dash would become even more of a show-off. I understand. So, I'm your new favorite now? Yep. Don't you just feel awesome? She started to blush. Okay, and I've been hearing a lot about this Echo. Who is he? Echo is a... not diamond dog in the same way that I'm a not griffin. He also happens to be a fan of you girls. Luna is his favorite. Anyway, he showed up in the jungle within a day ahead or behind of me showing up to the Badlands. Instead of a griffin, he became an alpha diamond dog. Then he went through around playing hero. Saved Daring Dew, killed Oizotl, met Disarray, and saved Wethoof. Wow, sounds like he's been busy. Wait, who's Disarray? She asked. Well, all that stuff about Discord visiting my world? Well, Echo is the human he brought here to cause chaos. He knew you were going to beat him, so with that was his latch-ditch plan, but it failed. Anyway, Disarray is a Draconicus Alicorn hybrid. He's the son of Discord and Princess Celestia. So I just stood there for a second, listening to everything I had said before her eyes rolled back in her head and she passed out. I carried her back to the deck of her friends and explained that she geeked out so much she passed out. Oh, what a nightmare. You were talking about Discord and... It was real Twilight. Disarray is the son of Celestia and Discord. Before he went on a rampage, they were in love. Did the do wa duty as it will. And she had a son. He can take the form of either a Draconicus or an Alicorn like the princess. When Discord went wild, he tried to stop him and got locked up for 2,000 years. Echo found him in freedom, and now he tags along with him. All the ponies just looked at me, trying to imagine their princess and the fiend being together, and all of them getting woozy at the thought. You know how far-fetched that sounds? Applejack asked me. Well, here's the news article right here. There's the photo. I pulled out the page from the post with where the bar, showing them all. Tithus, Echo with a spear, Ginger Snap, Daring Do, and the winged unicorn, Stallion, standing next to them. See, that's him right there, standing next to Daring. Wait, let me get this straight. You met Daring Do? Dash asked. Yep. You just? She actually looks just like you, Rainbow Dash, except with a different color scheme. Tan instead of cyan, and gray instead of a rainbow. In a black and white photo, you could easily be mistaken for her. She's got the same attitude problems you do, too. Rainbow crossed her forelegs and began grumbling about not having an attitude problem. But then Pinkie piped up. Hey, I just remembered! Griffy's all better and we're friends now! I never got to do it before, so you know what this calls for? A party? This time without pranks? Gilda suggested. A party! Meanwhile, in Canterlot. Come on, he should have written a reply by now. Here it is. Dear Princess Celestia, 
There is no need for such hostility. I couldn't hurt them if I tried. It's not in my capabilities. In fact, I spent the better half of the day being nursed back to health by them after I risked my life to save their so stuff it, okay? She's right here next to me, so stop worrying so much. I told you before, they'll be fine. She's going to write the next part. Sister, what does stuff it mean? Luna asked. He's telling me to fill my mouth with anything from pie to an old sock so I can't talk. He has literally no respect for us. Celestia scowled. Hello, Princess. It's me, Twilight. I am in good health. We all are, thanks to Griffin. He stood alone against six full dragons to protect us, and won. As such, he is currently beyond our capabilities to capture, and we are giving up the chase. We will return to Ponyville, where I will write you again. I cannot tell you where we are, or else he won't send the letter for fear of you coming after him. Celestia and Luna spat out their teeth and looked at each other in awe. Well, that is my student's writing style. It's good to know she's all right, but that doesn't seem right. Six, the older pondered. That is what it says, the younger replied. Then he's far more dangerous than I imagined. No wonder they gave up trying to capture him. After a display like that, only one of us, or the combined elements of harmony, would be able to stand against such a force. He must be captured at any cost. The problem is, I have no idea where he is. See, she's fine. Quit worrying so much. You've got enough to worry about running a country, doing a fine job at that, and you don't need to get stressed over nothing. And Luna, spires are evil. I killed your pet because it was trying to eat me. Don't raise monsters. Sincerely, Griffin. So much for no respect, Luna said plainly. He's afraid. I understand now. He's afraid. He's playing it cool, but in reality, he dreads the fact that my student is with him. Because that means, by association, so am I. He's being very nice to all of them because he fears retribution from me. Then he throws the first compliment that I've ever gotten from him out there, just for good measure. He did agree with me on a couple points, though. For one, he thinks it's foolish that Twilight left Spike home. And two, spiders really are nasty little things. Celestia took a deep breath, then let it out. Well, at least I know they're safe. That's a lot off my mind to worry about. It's just been so much lately. Discord escaping, the wet hoof thing, although that was solved by Echo, and now my student and her friends being rescued from dragons. Six of them. It makes me wonder, are these aliens perhaps here to help us? Where he is, While he is a criminal, Griffin only lashed out at those who wronged him. The guards in Stalingrad who tried to take his weapon for bits... Frost Snap, who endangered the entire village by trying to kill its savior, both of which he only injured minimally. Then if his claim of discovering magic is true, I still don't know what his goal is. I suppose my student will have some insights to that when she returns. Hold on, I need to change the wanted poster. Wanted. Alive. Griffin the Griffin. 4,000 bits. While a criminal, he possesses information vital to the future of Equestria, and is not to be harmed. Caution is advised, as is known to have slain dragons on several occasions. Extremely dangerous and unpredictable. Abilities unknown. There now, I'll send this out to every mail station, and we're set. You really should relax a bit, sister. He's only killed in self-defense at this point, and to rescue others. He would not harm them. Perhaps he is not as mysterious as previously thought. Well, I suppose this calls for a celebration. Another four days till we reach port, plenty of food, some new armor on its way, enemies became friends. Ah, who am I kidding? Let's party. But I don't have any party supplies other than what I packed, and I used those a while ago. Well, that's alright. It can be more of a relaxed party then. Say, does anybody have some tea? You're joking. You drink tea? Gilda scoffed. But of course, my dear. It helps to relax at the end of the day and clears the mind of worry. I say in a high-class tone, which just brings laughter to everyone else. Fluttershy pulls out some herbal blends, which cause both the crew and the main six to enjoy considerably. It's night. Gilda and Shimmer go to bed, as does Maria, Nadine, Twilight, Dash, Fluttershy, Selma, and Tiris join us out on the deck for some stargazing. It's not very good, since there's a massive armored balloon above us. 
But we can still see what's on the horizons. Oh! I forgot! Everyone, this is Selma, or Elder. She's the leader of the former Lemko tribe. And this is Tyrus, the chief of the former Romac tribe. They're natives of the jungle. The ponies looked at the hag of a woman, and the graceful man who almost looked like a snake would. They then be looked behind them to see several of the cats on deck, training going over the motions of stabbing, blocking, and shooting bows. We had replaced their old weapons with scales, spears for medium range, and bone swords for close. The bows were made of horn and dragon tendon. They also practiced formations unarmed, two groups clashing with each other and beating each other to a pulp. The flying V, flanking maneuvers in the works, and Etch and Growl were directing them. They really work hard, don't they? Even at this late hour, they're still up and about, Twilight remarked. They're all from warrior tribes. It's their pride. That and we're somewhat nocturnal, Nadine pro pointed out. So then, what's your role in all this? What position do you play? Oh, I'm a potion maker. I don't know enough to be a doctor, but my village makes the best remedies in the jungle. Maybe even the world. And my father was the chief. He was the best of the best and taught me everything I know. Other than that, stealth. I'm fast, silent, and can get around obstacles that others can't. I ride on Maria when we need to travel, but when fighting, she stays behind. Yeah, she doesn't seem too tough, Rainbow said. Well, what do you expect? She's just a kid. She's full grown, but not quite mature yet. I've been teaching her how to hold on her own. She probably won't see the front lines, though. She and Shimmer are the kids of the group, and we do what we can to protect them. And they're useful in their own ways. Yep. Shimmer is my best friend, because she's not afraid of spiders, and is a source of burning the vicious little... I stopped when I realized Fluttershy isn't very happy with the way I'm talking about spiders. Uh, anyway, I'd rather not have something with eight legs, three times the size of a bunny, and venomous as a manticore crawling around me. So, fire becomes highly important. Webs are sticky and you can't cut them. You have to burn them. Oh, oh my. Something that size could... Angel bunny. The yellow pygas has suddenly looked worried. Well, they're only found in the jungle, so you don't have to worry about that. Hey guys, nice work and looking good. Wrap it up, we're heading off to bed. We gotta be up early tomorrow for practice. Gotta be ready for anything. The rest of the week went by without incident. We arrived at Pittsburgh, where we docked. I spotted the Hinden Tanaka of the bow. It was bigger than the possibility, but our ship was far more brilliant. We already seemed to be smitten with it. You like the look of it? But of course! A question's most luxurious airship. Onboard spa facilities, five-star hotel, and unsinkable. It's getting ready for a round trip over the Ring Sea. Yeah, you wouldn't catch me on that death trap. Do you know much of airships? Only that the Hindenburg and the Titanic were two of the largest, most opulent methods of travel to ever exist, and both ended in disaster. There is such a thing as too big. Then again, things like that don't happen in Equestria, so it's probably nothing. Just me being paranoid. You remind me of Twilight, always worrying. Tell me about it. See you around! Rainbow flew off, glad to finally be off the ship. While she could fly around all she wanted, she couldn't just land anywhere, and she was probably missing her cloud home. I best be getting home, else Big Mac will hurt himself on the farm. It's been interesting to say the least. Applejack departed. Well, thanks to you, I now have a new area of study. I can't wait to get started. And now I know that there's a whole other world out there. I have loads I want to try out. I guess I'll see you around, Twilight offered. Yep, see you around. Joke's on her. I never told her any of the words. She'll realize that when she gets home. I anticipate screaming. I got to throw you all a party! See? It wasn't so bad. And I got to make up for it for you from last time. Come visit sometime. Piggy said as she skipped down the gangplank. I will. She stopped and turned to look at me. Promise? Uh, you know I can't do that. She seemed a little sad, but kept smiling anyway. Well, it was nice meeting you. Fluttershy squeaked. Oh, hold on. I forgot. 
I would never be able to live with myself if I didn't do this. Huh? I walked up to Fluttershy calmly and gave her a gentle hug. She seemed surprised, then returned it. Wow, you really are soft, I thought for a second, then realized I wasn't the one who said it. She did. Yeah, so are you. Anyway, good luck out there. Oh, and don't let Angel push you around so much. Wait, what? How do you know about... See ya. And then I flew back onto the ship and smiled. We stayed docked for another day. Estielhorn went into town to pick up the things he needed for his new designs. I made a couple of suggestions to him, like having another gem with which could be used to alter the hull, either using Protego to shield it or Obscuro to make it invisible. But the power requirements meant that it, we have to do either. We'd have to give up all movement and magical weapon system. He agreed the idea had merit, but we'd need way more gems than we had if we wanted to be able to pull it off. Well then, I guess after we reach our destination, we'll just have to stick around. We set sail again the next morning, away from the shore a bit, towards the Zebrican Isles. The Hinden Tannic also took off behind us, headed on its round trip of the world. We traveled for about five minutes before the luxury cruise ship's balloon started to deflate, making it sl drop slowly into the ocean. They had lifeboats, and everyone seemed okay. I just laughed. <laughs> Called it. Well, here we are. The first ever laser cannon installed on the deck of the ship. A rotating platform with a gem mounted on it with a mirror chamber. Pull the lever, it seals shut, and the fluid from the conduit runs over it, charging it. Keep it there for five seconds to give it a full charge, and then move it to the neutral position for a second to let it drain. Say the magic word, light fills the chamber and builds in intensity. Nothing is lost because any light given off bounces back to the gem and just turns back into a charge, and is let out again. Then, to fire, pull the trigger open to the iris. Light flows through the lens into a beam. Move the lever the other way, and the lens moves out of, from the front, making it a spotlight. Make sure to let go of the trigger when switching between beam and light, or else you'll damage it. And don't point it at the ship. Since it can all turn all the way around, we can shoot at targets in front, behind, or anywhere around. There's a built-in safety mechanism that shuts the iris if it's pointed at the support pillars at the lower half of the ship. Steelhorn seemed proud. Shimmer seemed equally as proud, considering she helped with it. They both looked at their creation and beamed. Well, I think we need a test fire. Mario, would you like to give it a whirl? This is a beam weapon, so it doesn't have any fall-off due to the gravity that the cannons do. It goes where you aim it. Hmm. See that rocky outcropping over there? I pointed at some rock formations coming out of the sea, signaling our approach to the Zebra Isles. Well, okay. She stepped up to the platform, pulling her claws on the handles. Looking through the built-in scope, she spotted the rocky outcrop and tensed up. She gently moved the device so she could see the triangle tree on the rocks. She held steady, then pulled the trigger for but an instant. She missed by a fair bit. Good shot! Although it'll probably take a bit of getting used to, I encouraged. Mind if I try my hand? Tears asked. Go ahead. He walked up to the gun mount, and instead of placing his weight on it as Maria needed to, he moved it gently and smoothly, looking through the scope, and then recharged it, then fired. The trees burst into flames. Excellent. You seem to have a knack for this. I was a chief of a tribe of rangers. Of course, you're a master of long-range weapons. Well, looks like you found your post. Good work. The black cat beamed. Maria, however, was a little disappointed. Hey, don't be so down. I'm not good at anything! She was almost in tears. Hey, that's not true. You just haven't found your special thing yet. You'll find something when you're good at. Something none of us can do. A unique way to help us all of your own. I happen to know three ponies who are doing the exact same thing right now trying to figure out who they are and where they fit in. Don't give up so easily, okay? But how am I supposed to figure it out? Well, why don't you spend some time with Soma? She's old and wise. I'm sure she'll be able to help you figure out what you're good at. Uh, okay. Hey, chin up, kid. You'll figure it out. Well, there we go, Steelhorn. We now have an anti-ship weapon capable of firing anywhere on horizontal area 360 degrees, with four blind spots being the support pillars. 
Since it's a precision weapon, it has an extremely long range and will be mostly used against other ships. Just pop their balloons. Cannons for siege and the like. All it needs is a shield and we've got ourselves a near unbeatable battleship. You've outdone yourself. Hey, I say this calls for celebration. Everybody meet below deck. We'll crack open some booze. Gilda looked at me with a bit of a glare. Hey, just one glass in celebration won't hurt, right? Her gaze softened. Just one glass. We headed down to the mess hall and into the wine cellar, although it housed far more than wine. Steelhorn opened the fridge, not the one that he had heads in. That was elsewhere. Luckily, the ponies didn't find the bag of severed heads, and the minotaur was able to turn them in. And all the gold we gave him into bits, which he had stashed away. No, he opened his special fridge, the one containing all the alcohol. What the... Where's Miss Scotch? He bellowed. There, there's nothing here, Nadine added. Why's the rum gone? I asked in classic Jack Sparrow swagger. Gilda walked over to the fridge and picked up something we didn't notice. A curly lock of pink hair that was stuck on the door. As soon as we saw it, we all yelled at the realization. Pinkie Pie! Dear Princess Celestia, I've got a jar of dirt. Can you guess what's inside it? Sincerely, Griffin. P.S. Twilight and them all arrived safely, just in time to watch the Hindentanic go down. What a waste of bits.